You have nothing to my say. My personality is like if you if I have to say something, I'm like this. <laughs> it's just stuck inside. <laughs> it's like gone. Hi guys, we are back with week seven of Hannah B. Bachelorette. This week we're not in a pretty setup because we're on vacation in Delaware. So I couldn't not do my recap this week. So it's just a little bit different scene. Uh, this is Gina. You've never met Gina before. Her original plan. <laughs> Originally, she wanted me to blur her face and change her voice. I still want you to. <laughs> we'll see if that happens. So how did this one start? Well, we saw the previews of the episode, and my first worry, I should say, was they were showing the drama between Luke and Garrett, which has obviously been going on this whole entire season, but they had a little clip of Tyler making a comment, like he was butting in, and obviously we'll get to that later on, but it made me a little bit worried. Because Tyler's your favorite. Yeah. Who's your favorite? Peter. <laughs> no, I like Peter too, but he reminds me of um he reminds you too of, of Ben, ben H. H. Yeah, Ben H. Yeah. I don't think they look that much alike. I think it's I, their personalities. Their mouth does. And their eyes. And their unsexiness, but then they're actually <laughs> okay, cut that out. I can't. So the first one on one date was with Garrett. We just don't like him. I mean I don't like him. I can't speak for Dina. I just don't think they're the right match. Yeah. So they start, they have a bungee jumping date. And they, Hannah's introducing him. Like, oh, hey, we're going to bungee jump tonight. Today. Then she acts all bewildered that they're going to be naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just stuck inside. It's like gone. I wrote down in my notes that it was, it's a little shocking that this is their very first real date. And their, their parts are touching. She had her bra on. Yeah. And then she took it off. Like, yeah. she was going to keep it on. And then she's like... I'll go all in. <laughs> and then also, um, does the harness, where does the harness yank? And how hard do you squeeze when you're jumping to avoid like jiggles? And at the end, Lisa, she didn't want to be part of this, but she was very involved in the episode yesterday. Don't say my opinion. Never mind. <clears throat> so then we get to dinner, and I think it was Garrett that did the toast, and he gave like a, a cheers to the sights that first date. <laughs> I wonder if she did a good job of just completely concealing herself the whole time or if he was able to... There's no way he didn't look. Yeah, you're right. And then she was wearing the, the pink <clears throat> fur jacket. How do you feel about her jacket? I thought about that and how she is different than other bachelorettes. It mm -hmm. seemed like her gloves had rhinestones on them. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. But she, like, owns it. Yeah. So I felt like during their dinner date, they had a good conversation. But I, I can't, like, genuinely feel good about it because I just don't like him. He, like, just doesn't ever look very excited. He'll, like, give a little slight oh, smile. he said he didn't like football. <gasps> yeah! And she, he Wait. liked golf. Right? Was that Garrett? That was or Garrett. Was that Peter? No, that was Garrett. He said he was a football family. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she gave him a look. She was smiling, and then he's yeah. like, and then I realized that I hate football. And she was like, this. She's like, football girl. I know, that's her thing. Roll Tide. Is that a football team? Isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> is that a college? <laughs> Maybe it is just for the college. I thought it was for the Alabama football team. Lisa, can this you look that up? Roll Tide is great. Trademark by the University of Alabama. So okay. the college. Last thing I want to say about Garrett State is he made a comment that he's <clears throat> falling in love for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this for you, Mia. How do you feel about Garrett? She doesn't remember <laughs> Garrett. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> so then we cut to the guys are talking, but we also find out that Peter has a one-on-one, -on -one, which, who's excited about that? Me! <laughs> Garrett's talking about the naked bungee jumping, and I don't think anybody was happy about that date, but all they show is Luke being really upset about it. Nobody's gonna be like, oh, that's awesome, man, you were naked with my girlfriend. Yeah. I, they're just really um, painting Luke as the villain, which is sort of deserved, I get that, but. He's very um, outspoken. Yeah, and he was thinking, he thought Garrett was lying about the naked bungee jumping. He said that? Yeah. Come on. Oh, my job strap. <laughs> <laughs> so, group date. Very low key compared mm -hmm. to the other ones. Just like exploring the markets and Hannah eating that pickle. 
And then Tyler C. got her flowers. How did you feel about that, Gina? Um, I don't know. Is he trying to be like Macho? Or maybe he's trying to show her how he would be if he was her only lover. Okay, Hannah and Luke P. have that conversation. He needs to pull her aside to talk to her about his um, discomforts regarding her naked bungee jumping with Garrett. Oh, yeah, and he was saying how it's like a slap in his face that her body, her um, temple was exposed and he wants to marry her. I get it, though. It's just, I said it before, it's a very odd situation to be in The Bachelor. Yeah. Because... If they end up together at the end of it. But you could be mad about anything because, like, she's kissing all these other guys. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Just, you have to think, like, okay, this is way different than normal. But I'm just wondering if she should have had some boundary. And she did say it was, like, non-sexual, which it, I'm sure that's true. But she told him to talk to her about his emotions. Right. Which he did. He just didn't. And he said it later that he didn't approach it in the right way and I think that's probably also true because I think his yeah. feelings were valid but he didn't say the right things and didn't handle it in a mature kind of level-headed way like he's been the whole season pretty much yeah so they have a clip of Jed on the piano which they have like three other clips of Jed on the piano I don't know why they're doing that, if it's if they're really actually trying to help him promote his musical career, or if it's kind of, they're trying to shove it, like create some drama with Jed mm -hmm. by showing the music. Because they play like the whole thing, well, his whole song. Yeah, when he went up to visit her. Yeah. yeah. The end when he was playing that piano song before. Yeah. Yeah, the piano, and then the other one was the guitar. And the girlfriend thing, so I just had found out about that. Apparently his ex-girlfriend came out and said that they were dating, and he told her he was going on the show to promote his career, but that he'd come back for her after, but then she just got ghosted or whatever. I didn't want to read too much about it because I was afraid I would find some sort of spoiler. But you said, well, when he talked to Hannah and said that he originally did come on because this would be a good platform, but maybe... Did he talk about the fact that he had a girlfriend and they in the show cut it out? I have a feeling not. Didn't he kind of have a feeling of like, I came on to promote my career, but whatever happens, happens? Or am I just making that up? I think he was thinking like, nothing's going to happen. Okay. But also, for previews for next episode, somebody leaves. And I was looking and I couldn't see Jed after really? that. So I'm wondering if he leaves. Does something come out? That maybe he's not fully in it for Hannah. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> weighed in on her feelings about Luke. I mean, my friend Charlotte weighed yeah. in on her. <laughs> not confused. <laughs> about Luke. So she hasn't watched any episodes this whole season. And her initial thought after Luke's conversation with Hannah was that he is, like, manipulative and mm -hmm. just saying whatever he, she wants to hear. Yeah, she's not falling for anything. She didn't like him. Charlotte. I always wonder, is it, do you need to have the background story or should you just go with your gut and what you're first mm. seeing of this guy? It's also The Bachelor, so they're showing what they want you to see. I don't know. It's not, I'm not fully convinced that he's a horrible person like mm -hmm. the rest of the guys tend to gang up on him and, yeah. and then he doesn't know how to respond correctly. Yeah, that's for sure. So we get to the last one-on-one, -on -one, which is the Peter date. I wasn't sure how I felt about him, but then after this one on one day, I think he's my favorite. Yeah, he is, he's a good guy. So it starts with them in uh, Pierre's? Pierre's? Pierre's. I don't even know what they were doing. I know, I for a minute there, I thought we were going to have another naked date. Yeah. They were. They were doing some kind of like massage. Not really a massage. I don't know. It was something weird. Well, she was like one. With the, and they the yelled at her. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> They're like, oh, you're doing that right. No, no, no. <laughs> And then that, that woman that's singing. Honey, 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 honey. Oh, yeah, and then they, so they're alone. They were, was it, yeah, what were they doing? Like getting in this. Oh. They were in a song. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we both didn't really expect that from Peter. Right. He seemed just very, like, innocent, mm -hmm. kind of, I don't know, just like a, you know, a little cute. Ben Higgins. Catholic school boy, yeah. yeah. Hannah's talking about how that's very intense chemistry that they have. Fire. When you Burned can see it. Burned it down, she said. 
<laughs> yeah. How do people feel after when they end up together and they're watching it back and she says, "You burned it in the hand." Yeah, like the guy she picks. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how anybody ever handles that. You're like, "Do we burn it down?" You know? <laughs> no. Not quite as well. We got other things going on. <laughs> One thing that I was wondering about during their conversation is Peter just very briefly grazed over the topic of his past relationship. Mm -hmm. I felt like she was trying to get some information, but he didn't share it. He just said mm -hmm. that it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, he seemed emotional. Yeah. Like he was maybe teary. Like maybe it's still affecting him a little bit. Who is this woman? Yeah. I don't know what that was. Was she a flight attendant? <laughs> I really like how he's not part of the drama, mostly. Right. Yeah, Connor too. Yeah, that brings us to the next part. Where the guys are talking. This must be like the morning. Oh no, this was the night. So the night after her date with Peter, isn't it? Jed goes up to her room. Oh. Yeah. Jed. Yeah. And he's singing again. Not promoting my musical career anymore, I doubt that. Maybe he leaves next week because he feels like he got everything out he needed to this episode. <laughs> I have one million Instagram followers. <laughs> See ya. Then we get to Luke and Garrett. They're sitting down talking to each other, and Luke is now asking Garrett to promise him that he's not going to bring their drama into the cocktail party. Where mm -hmm. last week, Garrett was telling Luke, promise me you won't say any of our names. So annoying. Yeah. They both have this, this like, alpha issue. And they're mm -hmm. always butting heads, and they're just immature. The previews were so hyped up with the sweet dreams, Luke. You know, uh, he said yeah. that, but really, mm -hmm. Luke was going to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the next day. Hannah mm -hmm. grabs Luke to talk to him about the kind of evil things that he said about how she was making a boneheaded mistake. And this was, mm -hmm. this conversation, I feel, was very similar to the, all of their conversations that they have. But he made the comment that he was kind of giving it his all. Like, this is the best I have right now, and I'm giving you the best that I have, but I'm constantly improving. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's kind of a good thing. I mean, maybe it is something that, you know, she would, she would want to hear, but it could also be true. Yeah, he said that, and I was like, crap. Like, can't you, don't you have better words to say? <laughs> this is the yeah. best I can give you. I know. It's like, oh, let me help you reword some things. I know, yeah. I even was thinking to myself, he needs to like write things down on paper before he goes to talk to her so mm -hmm. that he can organize things out. That's how I work too. Yeah, and not just blurt out his instant, what he's feeling right in that moment. But I understand her frustrations too. I mean, it wasn't a good conversation that they had. Uh, I, I always just think about Colton's season when he told her to make a toast and she like, <laughs> yeah, was like, right, that's a good point. That's me, mm -hmm. and maybe that's a little bit of Luke. Yeah. And then I, 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 many times I like I was probably forced to say something right away, and I just blurt out whatever is like in my mind. But then I think like, wait, that's not what I wanted to say. Yeah, but that was like I the agree. only thing that I could say right at that moment. Mm -hmm. And you said he's probably like a little emotional and immature. Yeah, like he doesn't necessarily know how to handle those situations mm -hmm. and he's sometimes he's trying to talk to the guys and say certain things but they always are just mm -hmm. they just uh, like I said before are just glazed over when it comes to Luke it's like they've like written him off yeah I'm not gonna give him a second chance yeah I agree so a couple things we need to touch on okay. <laughs> regarding the guys conversation with Luke once again it's Luke versus everybody well a handful of guys mm -hmm. but they don't stick up for him they just yeah. don't say anything Right, yeah, they're bystanders. There's all this talk about staying in your lanes ever since Hannah said that, which makes sense, but Jed says you can't stay in your lane if you look out the side window, which, yes, you can, or else you'd never be able to uh, turn or uh, switch lanes. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> Don't switch lanes. Who hasn't been driving that one looks out your side window and sees yeah. a kid blaster to their van going, <laughs> and you're like, what was that? <laughs> Then Luke comes back from this conversation with him and says, I know you guys want me to talk about it, so I'm just going to say it. Um, what Hannah and I talked about, I'm not going to talk about it. But Jed's getting mad and he says, Luke, 
don't you mess up another effing cocktail thing. And then Chris Harrison comes oh, out yeah. and says that there's going to be no cocktail thing. Like, Man, she's really putting a lot of effort into him with all of the drama that he's Yeah, doing. I don't know what's going on in her mind. Well, she, she said, was it to Oh, Chris? yeah, at the very end. Yeah. They're, she either is falling in love with him yeah. or he's going to drive her crazy. Right, yeah. I think she knows what the real answer is. So we get to the rose ceremony. And you know I've been talking about how I don't like the cropped pants. Well, <laughs> I don't think Gina does either. And she calls them ankle biter pants. I don't know if that's a real thing. What are they called though? Crops? Pedal pushers? Really? <laughs> that's what old people call them. Oh, Pedal I don't pushers? know. Did you make up ankle biters? Yes. Okay, because I feel like it makes sense. <laughs> okay, so the roses. Jed gets one. Mike gets one. Connor gets one. That was the, that was the telling rose. You knew Luke was mm. going to get a rose. Mm -hmm. So it was either Connor, Logan, Connor, Dylan, Dylan, <laughs> Logan, or Dustin. But we, we haven't, haven't seen much of him. So yeah. either he's the dark horse mm -hmm. or he's gone next week. I know. Yeah. We agreed last night that we got to the point where we're pretty much going to be sad if anybody goes yeah. home. With the exception of Jet Jet. Mm -hmm. Sorry if you're really a good guy. I know. The show's not portraying it that way. I know. I always feel bad talking <laughs> bad about these people because they might really be great people. Oh yeah, Dustin, like in his exit interview, said that he thinks Hannah loves Luke. Like loves. Luke. Did I miss that? Yes, you did. Apparently. Yeah, or else she wouldn't be going through all this effort. Yeah. He wouldn't still be here. Mm. Is he the one that buys the engagement ring? That makes her cry? Dustin? No, Luke! Oh. Oh yeah, I don't know. Her hair was pretty that night, is one thing I wanted to add. And mm -hmm. then also, Tyler, I don't know if Garrett was trying to like befriend Tyler in a sense, or if Tyler really is kind of siding with Garrett, but I didn't like that. At the end, when they were talking and Garrett was like, we've got to, you know, stick together, man. Or something. Well, keep yourselves level-headed. Yeah. Which was I guess that's good. good advice, yeah. I just don't like the thought of Tyler being friends with Garrett, I guess. Well, that sums up the episode. The previews for next week. We see a quick preview of Peter confronting Luke. But he's probably just defending himself in some way. Oh, yeah. It didn't seem... It seems like not malicious. Yeah. At the very end, the last thing I wanted to say. Another Jed song. Oh, yeah. Another Jed song. That was at least three yep. in the episode. And Tyler's dance moves were kind of good, I thought. Is he the one in the beginning that did the yes. stuff? Yeah. Well, that sums it up for week seven. We're on vacation, so we need mm -hmm. to get going. But we'll see you next week. I'll see you next week for week eight, episode eight. Do you like bringing your good love?